friends welcome to biology my dg today in this video we will discuss about two chromosomes so uh, the chromosomes are actually known as the bearer of hereditary characters because the genes are present in the chromosomes and all the chromosomes are located in the nucleus the chromosomes were first discovered by Hofmeister. Discovered by Hofmeister, but the term chromosome was given by Waldlayer. Uh, why the term chromosome was given to Waldlayer? Because when he stained the nucleus with some basic stains, uh, like uh, Suppose acetocarmine or aceto, aceto or sin or any basic fusin. When the nucleus was stained with any one of these, we found that there are some colored bodies. So, chroma, chroma means color and soma means body that means he found inside the nucleus some colored bodies when they are stained with any one of these stains that means it doesn't mean that chromosomes are actually colored bodies inside the cell but only when the nucleus of the chromosome is stained by these stains then only it becomes colors that is the basic thing then uh, what is the chromatin and what is chromosome? Actually, both are same with uh, some difference in the physical structure. That means, uh, if we we'll consider one chromatin, chromatin, the chromatins are found only in interface stage and they are uncoiled. They are uncoiled and in each chromatin, there is one single double stranded DNA and it carries out all the metabolic activities that is transcription, translation, all everything it carries out, all the metabolic activities. But when the cell enters into cell division, in A space, the DNA duplicates. So, at that time it is known as chromosome. During cell division it is known as chromosome. And this is usually found during the cell division. And during the S phase it becomes double. And it becomes a compact, compact coiled structure. Compact coiled structure. Whereas chromatin is uncoiled. And at this time it consists of two, two double stranded DNA molecules because duplication of the chromosome takes place and at this stage it cannot perform any metabolic function where here metabolic function is performed but here metabolic function during cell division there is no metabolic function this is the basic difference between chromatin and chromosome it is same thing but this is the name chromatin name you, you usually we use during interface stage when the cell is not dividing and that is uncoiled but uh, during cell division, the chromatin duplicates, the DNA duplicates, it becomes uh, double stranded and at that time it is known as chromosome. This is the basic difference. Now, when we will discuss the details of this uh, uh, chromosome, first we will discuss uh, what is the number of chromosome, then the size set, we will discuss one by one. So, first let us discuss the number of uh, chromosomes present in the cell. The number of chromosome in a particular species is always constant and the haploid set of a chromosome is known as N. The haploid set is known as N chromosomes and in all sexual reproduction organisms which are diploids, so in case of diploid, it is usually known as 2N number of chromosomes. Now the two number of chromosomes is always fixed and the lowest number of chromosomes in case of plants is found in haplopapus. 
Aplo Prabhas, one member of uh, Asterisk family. In this case, uh, the 2n is equal to 4, the smallest number. While in case of Ophioglossum, Ophioglossum, that is one tenth of height, uh, 2n is equal to 1262. That means this is the smallest number, while this is the largest number. So, this is 2n, that means n will be here 2 and here it will be uh, 631. But uh, let us discuss another example. We know that uh, the wheat plant, the wheat plant, plant is a hexaploid and the chromosome number is 42. So, how will it represent it? So, here we can write it 2n is equal to that is 6x is equal to 42 because here x is the basic number it is the basic number and it is equal to 7 because it is hexaploid that doesn't mean that when it will give gamete formation it will be 7 when it will give rise to gam gametes the gametes will contain half the number gametes will contain the 21 number so that when the both egg and uh, the male gamete will fuse it will be 42 but the basic number is 7 that is why it is known as hexaploid so this is uh, some idea regarding the number of chromosomes the next that we will discuss is uh, the size of the chromosomes now coming to the size usually the chromosomes uh, they range from 0 0.5 to 30 millimicron in length in length and this 30, 30 millimicron, this is found in case of particular the trillium. While in a diameter it ranges from 0 0.2 to 3 millimicron. This is usually the range. And the plant chromosomes are bigger than animal chromosomes. And in plants, the monocot chromosomes are bigger than dicot chromosomes. So that is uh, the one aspect. Now, if we we'll, uh, try to study how many chromosomes are present in a cell, what is the size of the different chromosomes, and what is the shape of different chromosomes, that we see the study of number, size, and shape of chromosomes. chromosomes is known as karyotype karyotype that is karyotype means the study of this the number all the morphological characters what is the number what is the number what is the size and what is the shape of the chromosome that is known as karyotype and if we draw the diagram of a haploid set of chromosomes in descending order suppose so it, like this, in a descending order, we will uh, draw the chromosomes from bigger one to smaller one of a haploid set, that means uh, N. Then that is known as ideogram. So these two terms are very important from a general point of view. Karyotype means study of the morphological characters like number, size, shape of the chromosomes, while ideogram is the diagrammatic representation of the haploid set of chromosomes in a descending order. And usually, the chromosomes which are present, they may be almost similar between them or there may be big gap between the large and small chromosomes. When there is a big gap, that is known as asymmetric. And this asymmetric uh, karyotype is found to be more advanced and uh, evolved than that of the symmetric type. That means say, if the chromosomes are asymmetric, then that shows that uh, uh, the species is more advanced, more evolved, or more recent than that of the symmetric type. So this is regarding the size. The next we'll discuss the shape of the chromosomes and the, uh, the shape of the chromosomes, uh, to study the shape of the chromosomes, the best, the best stage is anaphase stage. So, the shape can be studied in anaphase stage, and uh, 
the chromosomes what will be the set that depends upon the position of the centromere so <clears throat> depending upon the number of centromeres the chromosome may be acentric means a no centromere or it may be monocentric that means say one centromere it may be dicentric that means say two centromeres or it may be polycentric that means say more centromeres this is very common uh, these, these are the different types of uh, uh, chromosomes depending upon how many centromeres are present in the chromosome but the very common one is monocentric that means say in all chromosomes uh, mostly a single centromere is there when there is a single centromere or monocentric depending on set it is again of different types it may be metacentric sub metacentric or it may be acrocentric or telocentric so on what it is depends now <clears throat> if the centromere is present in the middle the centromere is present in the middle so both the arms are equal then it is metacentric centromere is present in middle so both the arms are equal so during cell division during anaphase it will give the appearance of uh, appearance of a v that means say uh, during anaphase it will give the appearance of a v set this is metacentric chromosome when both the arms are equal in case of some metacentric one arm is uh, slightly bigger than the other one here you see so this arm is slightly bigger than this arm so during anaphase it will either give the shape of a l it will give the shape of a l or if it will reverse then it may be look like j so it will be either uh, uh, l shaped or it may give right to j set then acrocentric in acrocentric the centromere is present towards one end not at the end only towards one end so in this case uh, this is one and this is one that means it present towards one end so in this case during uh, telophase it may be also so it may also give the uh, look like the g set j set and in case of telocentric this centromere is present at the end so the centromere is present only at one end so the other arm is not there so in that case it will uh, look like uh, the rod shaped rod shaped or you can tell that is also i shaped so the uh, the monocentric chromosomes they may be metacentric when both the arms are equal and during anaphase it gives a v shaped so metacentric one arm is longer than the other and during anaphase it will give the shape of l or j acrocentric centromere is present towards one end and it is j set and telocentric there is only one arm and the centromere is present at the end and during anaphase it looks like a rod or i set structure so this is about the uh, shape of the chromosomes then the next thing that we will discuss is the morphology of a chromosome <laughs>